You know that I am, am the, the baddest, baddest of them, them all. all. If you ain't about money, then I don't mess with y'all. y'all. Think I don't get girls, cause I ain't very tall. If she see my stacks, I bet you that she call you know that I am the baddest of them all. If you ain't talking money, then I don't mess with y'all. God damn, we're back! I can't believe we just introed back to the fourth podcast we have with Froggy Fresh. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but look him up, it's funny. Well, Jake, if you're here, you might as well hop on the podcast when you might as well... Can ruin some careers, you know. <laughs> when can we have you on, Jake? When are you? When's your fucking tell all? You're, uh, you're very highly re- requested. Uh, we're gonna say at the end of August. It is gonna be okay. Yeah, you know, I'll just go. Alright, come on in. You give give this guy a round of applause. Just some audio applause. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're gonna say it like the end of August, and I guarantee it. Two hour episode, hands down. Oh, yeah, I know it's sure. gonna be For two sure. hours. We got a lot to talk about. Right, a lot then. to talk about. That's going to be good. Oh, yeah. yeah tell that. Hey, fuck you, Jake. Yeah, right, we'll see you guys later. <laughs> we'll be seeing you. No kissing your mom either. Dude, that's... Oh, my yeah, God. He's like, I don't that. even have a mic to defend myself. Yeah. You need to stop doing that, bro. I'm trying not to. It's <laughs> trying. See ya. see ya. Oh, my God. All right. We're rolling. We're rolling. Welcome back to the still number one business podcast on Spotify. I, I don't know. Hey, I don't hey, hey round know. of applause to ourselves for that one. Did we talk about business in the last one? We did a little bit. A little bit. Is somebody over at Spotify reviewing these? <laughs> like, is somebody at... If, if you're from Spotify, like... <laughs> you're doing a great job over D- at Spotify. Thank you. Oh, thank hey, you hey, I'm not so trying much. to ruffle any feathers, but like DM us on, so, on Instagram and get a hold of us. Just be like, hey, I'm the, I'm the plug over there. We got there. some t-shirts, a sign for your wall coming your way. Oh, speaking of sign for your wall, actually, we gave a sign... Away for the people that stayed to the end of the last uh, podcast. And also subscribed. Oh, and subscribed. We announced that we're giving away one of these LED signs. And uh, we picked a winner. His name is Sam Daniels. So, Sam Daniels, congratulations. Thanks for supporting. And uh, we'll just do another one. We'll just do another one. We'll give another sign away. Yeah, subscribe. And then follow us on Instagram. Also drop a like. Drop a like, too. And then follow us on Instagram, Life Wide Open Podcast. And uh, we'll send you guys a sign. One of you guys, a sign. Not all of you. Be a lot of signs. (laughs) Ryan. I'm back. Welcome back, man. You, you were here <laughs> on the first one, and now, I mean, you took a little two-episode hiatus. You got some heat for the first episode. Everyone was, was so getting after you because you, apparently you didn't say enough for them. Dude, it, this is hard. It's a little intimidating being up here. Everyone's like, yeah, it just is. speak. And you're like, no, I don't want to interrupt anybody or, like, talk over, which everybody else was mad about, too. So I was Very like, damn, sorry. Did you feel like you had stuff to say and you didn't want to talk over it or, or what? Because the rest of us were talking over each other. <laughs> like, and, and, and I say that because like if you have something to say around here, if you don't speak up and say it at, at like the right time, it is, mm-hmm. it is timing, you know, you're going to just get run over. That's you, what I think I was worried about was not have or not saying it at the right time. Definitely did. Definitely have things I wish I'd brought up, but well, we got more podcasts. Luckily for you, True. we have plenty of things for you to talk about today because you're kind of on the hot seat. We Fuck, did. We this had, is my hot oh, seat. Oh, we had, Ryan's hot seat. Well, no one told me either. Up. Wait, wait, wait. It's it's not that big of a deal. It's not. It's still gonna be a normal episode, but but you are slightly on the hot seat. We're gonna grill you a little bit, and uh, <laughs> you know, just get you a nice char broil on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken got tons of clout for the last one. We did extend the invite to have him back. You know, Ken, you did really well. Uh, but he was uh, like, nope, that's all I can handle. Are you done? Are you one and done? Well, no. Are you a one pump chump? One pod chump? One pod chump, baby. I'll be back. This is, this is Ryan's moment to shine, though. So Yeah, mm-hmm. Ken doesn't want to overshine, Ryan. The way he said I'll be back made me scared and excited. We got, we got a guest on here, Tint. Yeah. Man, we got all Tint, the get out of here. The what the fuck? Since, you know, this is my first podcast, just jumping in here. I left, <laughs> you, guys, left you guys a little gift underneath the, oh. the tables here. Oh! So like, oh my, my gosh! Why do I not see it? It's literally, oh it's literally gosh. under the literally table. Under it. Holy frick it! I was wow. wondering. <laughs> Me too. Me That's, too? It's a yeah, I mean, what? So I was in on the joke. He said, "You guys." Tint, that was phenomenal, the, man. That was good. Are we going down on a knee? The boys are buzzing. Ah. Let's do this. Let's do this. Cheers. Hey, no Cheers. early starts. Ken. You got a timer? Can you Three. hold up? Hold up? Hold up? Hold up? Three. Hold up, Ken. Ken, chill, chill, chill. Go. Sucking it down. I've been practicing. Holy crap. Wow. Oddly enough, I was actually planning on going into this podcast not drinking. 
I've been trying to lay off the booze during the week. I think my brain operates a little bit more. Also, I have another theory on this. I'll, and it's I'll not, bring up at it's the, not the, the week thought, for the record, but it's, I feel. I mean, it's Friday. I feel. It is, yeah. But how is that going for you, Ben? So far. Which part? The not drinking thing. Honestly, up until 5 o'clock on today, Friday, you were doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's okay, I have, a, I have a theory, actually, about the not <laughs> drinking part. Going into the weekends... If we like let loose on a Friday, because we're uh, Friday night and Saturday, because we usually film on Sundays. Um, recently, we've kind of been off the ball on Sundays, even though. So, I'd say lately we've been filming way more Saturday afternoons. Yeah, that's true. Than ever, but that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, kind of letting loose on Saturday nights and then Sundays. Do you feel like you're more refreshed on on Mondays, Dude, being I that never you, being that you had like a fun weekend and you were able to like kick back and relax? Excuse me. I I don't. Sorry. Do you guys? Or or Monday, you're like, ah, oh, it's like taking it almost. Monday's almost like a waste day where it takes your brain some time to turn yeah, back on. Yeah, lately I almost feel like if we were to do something, and we totally could, if we were to film on Sundays, I think I'd feel better on Mondays. Yeah. And like every Sunday, like I used to work at Zorba's, and like every single Sunday they have their Sunday fun day, and like literally. 19 people call me and text me and they're like, you got to come on Sunday. I'm like, I just went out all weekend. Like, I don't know what to tell you. And like, I don't normally, but then when I do, I like, hate my life on Mondays. And then did you say no this Sunday? Yeah. Did you say no this Sunday? No. That's why I said I don't normally do it, but then I did do it this Sunday. What time do you show up to work? Uh, two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to circle back to your question, little Ben, going into Monday, dude, when we take the weekends off, we don't rest. We just like. Go. Just turn up the dial and don't film anything, and everyone goes wild. And I go into Monday like with like the freaking Monday scaries, dude. I'm like, holy shit! I have so much stuff I need to do. Yeah, that's and a great point, actually. Monday scaries because we almost put off. There's a million people wanting a video this week, and I gotta either come up with more stuff to put into that video, or edit the one that we already have filmed like it's just it it's a lot i mean it's pretty uh i do i definitely have anxiety when monday comes and it's because we just hit it so hard on the weekend but i mean i don't know i feel like people like us that spend so much time working like we we work a lot although it doesn't look that way from the outside perspective we work a lot more than pretty much 99.9 percent .9 of people that we know i feel like you're more like tended to going booze hard you know like people that work hard play hard too yeah exactly and it's just constantly like burning the candle at both ends mm -hmm. is what my mom tells me yeah, I was, oh, yes. my mom yeah. says that too Same. i was just thinking about this today actually and people always go oh man it must be so nice to pick your own hours you don't have a boss <laughs> no. all that quite the opposite one like today it is uh it's 508 on Friday, and we're just sitting down to start the and podcast. And Ryan gets really, really upset. I do. He I does. do. Totally do. We'll probably talk about that later. I'm a psycho. <laughs> no, I mean, that's but not I the mean, point. But I do remember reading something. This is just a quick like quote. It was like, yo, I traded my 9 to 5, good for you, for my, I'm self-employed now. Now I work all the time. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, I traded my 9 to 5 to a 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. So... Back to what you said, Ryan. Would you rather have a boss that told you you got to be here at, at 9 a.m. and you can leave at 5? Um, no, I definitely wouldn't want to have like someone telling me what I have to do, which is tough because we all tell each other what we have to do. But yeah. like we're all in it together. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather work later and start earlier and do all that to build something that's like ours. Mm -hmm. But some days, like it sucks. Some weekends we're filming, we're like, yep, let's get up at... 8 a.m. so we can go to Vinny's, which is, like, fun. Of course, we're like, oh, yeah, we have to take our Mustang mudding at, at a thing. <laughs> right. But, like, you have something that's, like, planned. Or we might just go, yeah, we got to film on Saturday. Right. I think unpredictability is sometimes hard for me. So then when we're like, yeah, we might film on Saturday. I don't know, though. But even when you go to, like, film those fun things for, say, Vinny's, it is still stressful because, it's like, okay, like, do we get shots of this? Like, is this turning out, like... What do we need to do to make this more entertaining for the viewer? Are we doing a great job explaining this? And mm -hmm. like you are working. Yeah, it definitely. is. It is fun though. It is fun, but or it's like when we were when we were water skipping. We're all in the boat. Ben's recording, I'm recording on a second camera. Ken's flying the drone and Ryan's driving. We don't even have time to necessarily be like, "Dude, this is so sick." We're right. you know, we're all locked in. Yeah. Although it is super sick and we were having a lot of fun, but you know, execute the job. We got to make sure 
uh, that we stay grateful to that mm-hmm. and like understand that if you had to go do something else, I guarantee you if like, let's just say you had to go and find another job and you started working at, let's say a bank, you were going to be a, a teller at a bank. You would fucking do that the first day you'd get halfway through. You'd be like, Regret. Why didn't I work harder? <laughs> Why didn't I work harder? I do not like this. I miss the hard times that I had doing what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. So you got to make sure you keep that perspective. Totally. It's definitely all perspective on stuff like that, I feel like. You kind of get inside of something, and it's hard to, like, appreciate all the things. Right. But then when you look at it on the outside, then you're like, damn, that is. We get so jaded to, like, everything. Exactly. It's, it's like, terrible. I just bought a new car. You guys will see it on the next ep- video of Seaboys TV. But, like, I've wanted this car for my whole life. And I was super, super excited. And, like, I finally fucking got it. And I get in it and I drive it. And, like, the next day I was, like, driving. I was, like. <laughs> it cool, but. Yeah. I mean, it, like, and I feel a little bit happier. But I feel like after a certain threshold, you, you only can increase so much. Yep. And, uh, like, we just live this, like, dopamine ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. Which is terrible. I mean, that's like, like a that's not what, how you're supposed to live. It's true, and it's just like diminishing returns as time continues to go on. Ben and I were talking about that though on our way out because we were just in town. We had an hour long drive back here before the podcast. And we were talking about just like making sure we don't lose that appreciation for things because it is very easy to get jaded. We we move fast. Like mm-hmm. things are constantly evolving, constantly moving. New. There's so many things going on here. And just, like, appreciating what you have. I think this can go both ways, too, then. So I'm talking about the group. As a group, um, we get a lot of toys. If Ryan buys something, I get to experience that, right? Mm-hmm. So so if uh, Ben buys his C8 Corvette, like, I'd never even seen one in person. Uh, maybe a couple. But anyway, I was super stoked. And now uh, I get to experience everything C8. I can ask him for a ride if he wants. If I want to drive it, he'll probably let me drive it. But it can go... The other way too, where you get that C8, and then I'm like, cool, I've ex- I've experienced everything I would ever want to about a C8. I've ridden in it, you know, all that. Yeah. yeah. Um, like anything that we that we buy, uh, it it doesn't just come down to you. That's so true. Anytime you guys make a move, yeah, I get to experience the upsides and the downsides of it. You almost experience everything five times. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is which is so interesting. The the line of work that we're in, how easy it is to justify anything. Anything. Um, making like, uh, like really extreme purchases like that, that most most people could never justify until they have like enough passive income to, uh, you know, cover their expenses of it. You know, people talk about that a lot when they're like, Oh, don't buy a, a Lamborghini until your passive income can pay for it. But for us, it's like, it It makes it literally, it doesn't make sense to have money in the bank because let's say I have a hundred grand in the bank. That that hundred grand is making me zero money or whatever the bank is like point yeah. zero zero eight percent. But you know, I go out and spend a hundred grand on a car, well then I immediately have like, you know, off of the cuff like five videos and then right. that could that could that make a return more. of of you know thirty grand or and something like that. The and then rolling. it keeps the ball rolling, um, growing the brand. Which you could is, make more than that, honestly. Which is interesting because way to go, Jamie's back on his shit after Ryan was up in the bar. <laughs> so uh, me and Ryan actually had that conversation a couple weeks back about his like, jet like, ski. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the one yeah. time it didn't work out. Yeah, I, I Dude, you fucked me. <laughs> I'm Ryan. <laughs> I'm sitting there. Wait, and I go, this, yeah. You know what? No, yeah. yeah. I'm Let's getting talk paid. about the jet yeah. ski. Okay, so me and Ryan are in the truck, and I don't know how how it came up, but I was just like, I want to buy a Lamborghini. So I kind of told Ryan. I planted that idea in Ryan's head where I was just like, you know what? Blow your we're money. In, we're in such a weird position. Blow your money. Like recklessly, I, the not, the not, line, not in that termage, but it kind of came, it how pretty it much came, came off like that. Right. Can I just say one thing before you step in? Not blowing all of your money. Like, right, you, right, still right, have, right. you have still money in your bank. Right. But yeah, you, you're recklessly spending a lot of money. The line right. that stuck with me that Ben says, he goes, yeah, man, it's honestly selfish of you to have money <laughs> to save your money. That's what he said. He said, it's selfish, not of me or of anybody who goes, it's selfish of you to save your money and just hold on to it. And I go, you fucking dick. 
<laughs> and I go, yeah, you're right. It is. And I go, I've always wanted a stand-up jet ski. Fuck it. Yeah. If there's one on Facebook, I'm, I'm buying it. Buy the best, most expensive one I it can was. buy. It was literally the best, most expensive one in the tri-state area. Mm -hmm. And it has disappointed me. <laughs> he rode it for two hours. Yeah. About that. And it's costed you so much money in repairs, and it's not even fixed yet. Mm -mm. <laughs> I've only ridden it for the video. Everyone goes, oh, you get to backflip yet? I'm like, no, it broke <laughs> during the video, and I have not ridden it since. <laughs> so, like, two <clears throat> days later, Ryan goes out and spends 14 grand on a stand-up jet ski mm -hmm. that was supposed to be, like, the best stand-up jet ski of all time. That thing's a piece of shit. <laughs> we basically put it in the water, and from the first five minutes, we were like, oh, there might be something wrong with this thing. I still don't know if there was. I don't think there was. Maybe not. Maybe we were just idiots. I don't know, man. Hard the way say. it looked. I know everyone's like, you wrong, CJ. You didn't ride it. But like, I was looking at it, and I was watching him ride it, and I was listening to it, and I was watching the videos. And I was like, this one doesn't seem like something's right about it. Sure enough, it looked great. It did look great. Uh, we convinced Ryan to try and backflip it. Well, yeah, I was like, let's go into that a little bit. Okay, so everyone watching our videos, right? They're going to expect you to do a backflip in the first video or maybe shortly after that. Because it's, it's like a stand-up backflip jet, backflip yeah. trick jet, jet ski. ski. Right. So it's like, and if I, if I were in Ryan's shoes, I just remember being like, ah, I would hate this right now. I was like, I don't want to. We've ridden a stand-up for, what, collectively an hour, you know? They're hard to ride. And then it's just like, cool, so you're going to backflip it in this video? And Ryan's like, we'll probably have to at least try. Right. That was the vibe. And, like, that's that's it's another like, hardship of, of making content. Like, right. it really is. I would never personally buy a backflip jet ski just because I know then I'd have to <laughs> yeah, fucking exactly. backflip it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there was that. I don't want that. to do that. You're smart. It's like buying a fast car. You buy a fast car, everyone's going to want to see how fast it is. And then boom, you're in jail. <laughs> <laughs> or you, or boom, you fucking sunk your jet ski in and it sucked up a bunch of water and it corroded the internals because you didn't know there was a bunch of water in there. And now you have three grand into the new motor and it's not even done yet. What is going on with your jet ski now? What what's the he what's, ordered the parts? What's the, mm -hmm. what's the overall uh, issues? Okay, well it got water <laughs> in it and I knew that's bad. So I tried to start it and then trying to start it so much drained the battery. The low voltage on the battery took out the ECU. So then the ECU broke. So I had to get a freaking ECU from Australia. Then the ECU from Australia comes after like three weeks. So then water has been sitting in the engine for three weeks. So then I try to start it, get it running. You heard it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, this is great. Put it all back together. Won't start. I'm like, what, what the heck? We tear it apart. Turns out. It was the entire inside of the engine was rusted and had yeah. rocks and it was just a total mess. So it's now fully broken, new crank, new pistons, new cylinders, everything. I've, I will say I've never seen the inside of a motor rusted like that. We, With we could 45 throw, minutes on it. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. So anyway, 2,500 bucks later, I should have enough parts to get it running again. Yeah, man, Dang. that sucks. That's when like yeah. a... You know, that's the domino effect of a one conversation Whoa, going really bad. south. That's the one time, though, it has actually kind of not worked out. Really Normally, backfired. when we, we make the dumbest purchases, we can justify buying this shitty fake Lamborghini. Because it is I, shitty. I'm, I'm not going to say how much money, but that first Lamborghini video made, it paid for the fake Lamborghini. And then... And then we, Ken uploads it to Facebook, and the Facebook one makes ten grand. Yeah, that's I'll, I'll insane. Say that, I'll yeah. say the Facebook, the Facebook one, made fifteen. Fifteen thousand. We're crazy. Facebookers Didn't now. even know that you could so, make money. So on everyone, Facebook. everyone's in the comment section. You guys are so fucking dumb. <laughs> I like all this. I was like, I already knew it was gonna. I just no one buys a fake Lamborghini, especially it, at that price. Let's yeah, keep that exactly. in mind too. But it was so on par for our brand. Um, but yeah, it, it worked out and it unfolded, and now it's like anything we do with it is just straight profit. Um, and every time we use it, it's like a million view video. We can justify the dumbest investment. We can make an investment out of damn near anything as long as you can make it entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best part about our lives. Lately, we haven't been so destructive. Like I know we did that with the Amazon stuff. And before that, that stuff was but, cheap. But yeah, it was cheap. Things. But you'll get people that are like, wow, like you buy it just to destroy it. And then I'm like, well, obviously you don't get it. If you get it, just be entertained by the video and just understand that we're, we're making it back. I get, you know, but like, dude, why do people care? I know. 
Yes. Why I do remember people, we got an email about the 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 chairs. Like chair smashing is our thing, oh bro. God, yeah, yeah, that was some moms. Yeah. That was ridiculous. Let's talk about this. We're known for smashing every white plastic chair in sight. And we smashed probably coming up 500 to roughly 1,000. Bro, what, do you that's think more? so high. That is <laughs> oh. way more than. All right. We've probably mind. smashed like 150. We bought like. We only, when we went to go buy 200 for Randy, we came home with like 50. Okay. And we've bought, we've broken. All right, for story's sake, let's just broke a a million chairs. I don't know how many chairs we've broken, but we've broken more white plastic chairs than probably anyone else. Definitely. In in the world. Because I don't know why anyone else would do this, but we've broken all these plastic chairs. Some mom writes this book of an email, sends it to us, and it's talking to us about, uh, how we are setting such a bad example for kids breaking the white plastic chairs and then how it's filling up the landfills with plastic and like we're starting this trend of breaking them which is only going to add more plastic to it and i was like holy shit i didn't i didn't think about that yeah, but I also that, i think that lady a, was giving us too much credit it's a sh- yeah i don't think anyone else is going out doing that but also like a white plastic it's gonna end yeah. up in the garbage anyways out of everything we do that yeah, yeah. imagine bad the demand for, for white I'll plastic chairs up. increase so strongly that we are affected we're affecting single-handedly affecting the environment <laughs> yeah, that's sure. one of those things yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah. you yes, gotta choose yes, your lady. battles we are that influential I, over the uh that plastic chair funny. market that shit was funny and i bet your kid watches uh, his the kid probably doesn't even know but because if if they care that much to email us uh, they might yeah, be listening. If your mom's a Karen bitch, <laughs> could have been <laughs> her. Jesus. Sorry. Let's move on. Ryan. Ryan. You, you are in the hot seat. Fuck. So. Uh, Ryan's like, what, am I? How do you. When did you become such a psycho? <laughs> Oh my! God. I knew this was coming, dude. <laughs> I just I didn't, didn't think it was coming didn't this was, fast. I didn't know where he was going with it, but it was such a it was such a subtle lead in. I mean, you might as well ask it right out of the bat, dude. I don't know. I, I I don't know how I became this. I've tried everything. Do I've heard caffeine makes me angry? I cut out Mountain Dews. Like, <laughs> well, how hard did you try that though? <laughs> When was the last as time you saw me drink a Mountain Dew? As soon as Ryan Yesterday? found out that the yeah, Mountain right. Dews... we had some last this week. As soon as Ryan found out the Mountain Dews weren't crediting to his psychoness... Right, back back I can be back you want to know something, though? Ryan is the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Yeah. It's the, I, I, you like, can if you get him ticked off in the right way, you do snap. Dude, Hold up. So, no, so what, does? Thing. What, el- what else did you try and cut out, though, before we completely ditch that one? Mm. Like, what else did you think it could be? I tried cutting out TV at night. Um, he tried... Did you integrating more you, jerking off? Were you Googling this? Yeah, you just like Google like why am I irritable? Oh. That's a great word. Okay. Yeah, and like that's what I feel like it is. But no, still the caveat to me, you said I'm a nice guy, which you I are, would like you're to think debatably is true. uh I mean next to Micah. <laughs> like I if I had a new friend, which I never have a new friend, but let's say I did have one, uh I'd bring him around and I'd know you two would be like easily the most nice and friendly towards them and treat them the best. Not saying these guys wouldn't, but like you're gonna go the extra mile. Yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I am the way that I am, but like I'm, I'm <laughs> no really nice. Exactly, <laughs> I'm nice to people that I like don't know. Like you could be like, you could literally like hit me with you're your polite. car. I'm, you could like hit me with your car, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have been right. in the park. You know, whatever. Like mm-hmm. that. You but are that people, kind of guy. You say sorry. True. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's that's but then people reaction. that are nice to me and love me, like my friends, the people I work with. <laughs> Those are the people I'm an asshole. <laughs> I don't you know have, why. I you wouldn't go that. Far. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't that. say that we, you're we, an asshole. But we also kind of push your buttons. Well, I mean, so we do ask for it. Yeah, but not like really because you guys are never like that much of dicks. I don't know. It like everybody's a, it, the same to everybody. I will say everyone gets their own shit. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny though even, is but. when we're picking on Ryan. That's not what pisses him off. Mm-mm. It's no. like it's like when I'm picking on Ken. That's what pisses and them off. And things are or getting like, things like, like way that. out of hand or like they're getting off schedule. Right. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like uh, like at the bachelor party when they were wrestling on the dock, fighting, whatever. And you were you were pretty mad about that. Why, yeah, why, why were you that? Why, why were you so mad? Just causing a scene. And then my first instinct is go, I wasn't that mad. <laughs> to- totally was. Totally was. <laughs> uh, I think it was because I was like, all right, guys, uh, you've been doing this for like since Ken woke up. 
<laughs> like it had been like two hours. Ten in the morning till about noon. Yep, till about noon. Just, it was Justin's bachelor party. Yeah. I just wanted to go on the lake. I was getting off schedule in my brain. I was like, let's go, let's go. I want to get out, drink, whatever. And then, I don't know, I was like, all right, just quit. And I think it was a little bit like we were filming. I was like, oh, this is Justin's bachelor party. I don't yeah. know if, if he's upset. Talked with him. He was totally fine. But I was like, I don't know. I just was like sick of it in the moment. And I was like, stop. And mm -hmm. then yeah, shortly fair. after you guys we, did. But did, god damn, then fair. I watch it in the video. It was hilarious. And hilarious. then it was hilarious. Ryan is super duper nice, like 90% of his entire life or, or more, whatever. We stretch the psycho thing. But yeah, we definitely do. But basically, it's the person that just is super nice until they just snap. Mm -hmm. And like, right. and, and it's not like a bad snap. Like he's going to fucking you care, shank though. somebody. You're just like, bro. Like you, it just boils over and then it happens. And mm -hmm. so honestly... One, it's almost nice to expect that to happen, but we expect it so much that we obviously clown on it. Sometimes I that can is tell. the thing. We we really make it seem like it's more than it is, which I think we've almost convinced you that you're more of a psycho than you, than you are. Maybe. Just by calling you like our <laughs> resident psycho. I think you've got my and, like, girlfriend freaked out. Making <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stuff like she's, that. Yeah. She's like waiting. Stuff like that. Yeah. Like, just, is he we gonna haven't hit been me? dating that long. That's and like, <laughs> we really haven't like gotten into anything. And she's like, you're always so nice. Why does everyone say that you're a psycho? And I'm like, I am, but I'm not. Like, I don't know really how to explain it. I will say Alondra is like your kryptonite. Uh, you are just the happiest guy around her. You are. You're always I very happy. But you're not very very faking it. Not no, no, it. no, no. He's just genuinely happy. They're in like their own little world, no matter what's going on, which <laughs> is it's beautiful to see. I love seeing it. So um, she's worried, huh? I mean, she just, I'm sure. She has asked. She's it. like, are you going to not ask? Are you going <laughs> to go psycho asks? on me? No, but it's like, like one of her everyone... kinks. Like she's asking oh, for my. it. Ryan, go <laughs> psycho. Go, go psycho <laughs> on me. No, baby, you don't want that. Trust me. And we're over here like, trust me, you don't want that. <laughs> Does that piss you off when we call you a psycho? It definitely mm. probably makes you more mad. <laughs> I it wouldn't make don't, you don't hearing. react to it though. You don't react to it like I'm not a psycho. He understands the reaction mm -hmm. and yeah. the response. Yes. <laughs> like I was saying last yeah. Yeah. podcast. Well, because well, sometimes you call me a psycho when I'm clearly not, and then I go okay, and then other times when I actually I think it's because you call me a psycho when I'm not being a psycho. But all the times when I freak out and I'm being a total lunatic, you guys let me slide. You don't confront me it's because, because you're going fucking psycho, you, bro. Oh my. Okay, it's true. <laughs> Everyone just step away. We're going to let them, let them cool <laughs> off. And I won't, that's I won't how, say. That's how you get punched in the face. <sighs> I won't say too much since Jamie can't defend himself, but uh, Ken mm. calls you psycho if you literally tip yeah, something over on accident. But, yeah. but Ken is also equally as afraid of Ryan when he does go psycho, so Ken doesn't say it when it's like, That's you know, true, yeah. True. Yeah, I, like Ken's the last Ken, dude for trying as big to as you are, you, you really hide when it comes to When it's to real, conflict. dude, yeah, I hide. True. I run away. <laughs> I mean, what's Ryan going to do? Punch me in the face? Probably. <laughs> Ben's like, I'm Possibly. not I'm Dude, not there's actually that, a story that about. one time you probably, you probably don't even know this. So little. Mm, this, You're just so young. This is going to be a good one. It was, uh, it was my ex-girlfriend's birthday party, and you were mm. pushing my buttons that day, dude. We were at Chubbs. I'm picture. I know the spot. I'm envy. You were like, get your shit together. You were just all up in me, and I was so mad, dude. I literally turned around. I was like flexing. I was, like, I was literally gonna hit you. <laughs> it was the closest. That. Yeah, I, I do. Remember you were that. probably so drunk. I, I was so drunk, Slightly. and I remember waking up in the morning, going, "Man, I can thank God. Thank God I didn't hit Ben. That would have been awkward. That would have been one time. Ben, been funny. One time when we were drinking, Ben tried to punch me, but I blocked it. And then Ooh. like I was like so fucking happy, I blocked it. He like came with this. Do you remember this? It was right by the hot tub in the old shop. I was like, fucking really? he started getting, what? I was you, fucking you started, with him. He started fucking with me. Like he started but hitting he me on the side serious. of the head. Well, I didn't you hit you on me. the. No, you kept I kept kick. I was kicking literally you on the kept shin. Slapping me. No, I was kicking slapping. you on the side like, of the stop shin. Slapping it me. It was kicking. I was kicking, but not that hard. And then you went it's pissing you went, me off. <laughs> and like went like that. But you threw like kind of like sideways. Thank God you don't know how to throw a punch. <laughs> so I literally, I literally just went like this, and like your wrist hit, and then like I was like, holy shit, this dude's actually pissed. And I like stepped back, this dude, and then literally like <laughs> like thirty seconds later, he's like, hey dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. But it's the probably post punch clarity. It's probably yeah. a no exactly. That's yeah. true, man. You know you one thing I gotta sure say about don't. Ben. Ben loves to get under people's skin. He likes Constantly. riling people up. You know what he doesn't like? 
anybody that comes Riling back at him, him up. Yeah, anybody that starts True. razzing you, you get pissed. Bro, it's dude. like that one video when I pissed. told you that you were getting dumber every day. You, you were genuinely pissed. rattled. He was rattled. I'll I'll say from <laughs> my from this? my standpoint, I don't think that you get pissed, but you don't take it well. Mm-hmm. No. You'll talk mm-hmm. about it throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he kept bringing up like. Oh yeah, CJ's dishing it out now to everybody. Can't do anything right. I was like, I just told you you're getting dumber every day. That's not that bad. All I gotta say, say is, like if it time. makes anybody feel any better, I'm terrified for my hot seat. So, <laughs> okay. Anyway, this is my hot seat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's move forward here, Ryan. Uh, since you're in the hot seat, what what were you doing before YouTube? What were you doing? I don't I don't know. For I've, work. What were you for doing? work, I was uh, working landscaping. I was yep. about to transition into working construction. That really sucked. Uh, I feel like our lives, like recreational wise, were always very similar. Like we we're kind of doing on a smaller level what we do now. Like yeah. we're still riding dirt bikes on the weekends. We're still going on the lake, stuff like that. But I don't know. I spent a lot more time in Fargo, like yeah. with my Fargo friends. Well, obviously had like you were in college. There. You were in college. I was in college. Um, in a frat. I was in a frat. So you were you were kind of working the labor lifestyle. But, mm-hmm. I mean, you were in college. You were going for business, correct? Mm-hmm. And what do you think you would have done with that degree if if it wasn't for this? I knew this question was coming. Dude, what do you think you would have done? I, if I you don't have don't an answer, know. yeah, that's fine. I was, I was thinking about this today when Ken and I were packing hats, and I feel like many times in my life I'm not in control of it. And maybe that's why I get upset sometimes. But, like, I never know what I want to do like I never knew what I wanted to do for a job I just knew that I had to go to college like that was that was the next step the next step if Went you didn't have anything online yeah mm-hmm. uh had to go to college and then I was like well I guess after that I'll figure it out I thought about doing construction with my dad but I suck at that so that wouldn't have worked out like I truly don't know what I would be doing if I wasn't here yeah. and I think it's tough on me sometimes too because sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing here and I just like I want to do better. I want to like do I think the we most. All feel that way sometimes. Yeah, and it's tough. So you uh, you didn't feel like you graduating college because you graduated mm-hmm. with a business management mm-hmm. something like that. <clears throat> do you feel like you were like more prepared uh, being graduated with like a degree like to go out into the world, or you're just as confused as you were when you went in? Mm, I feel. Like, I learn things, but I feel like you learn more about, like, interacting with people and, like, creating a network. Like, that's what I would say college did for me was, like, meeting people and, like, establishing connections through, like, something to do. So, like, after college, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I went to school with this guy and he does this thing. And it just kind of, like, taught you how to be an adult. That's how I feel. College teaches you how to be an adult, but I don't feel any more prepared. Like, I was speaking up in class being like oh yeah no for this tax thing this is how like you can do it because i remember in my business tax class they were like oh yeah this is like these three ways and i was like oh yeah this is how we did it and like i had learned that prior to my business tax college senior year of college i I will say i wish i did have a college degree like you but like obviously i'm not gonna fucking like i'd I'm not going to waste my time doing yeah, that right just now. Simply wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> but it but doesn't I, I necessarily feel. gain you. But like, if I if it would have been ideal, like obviously I would have taken it. So yeah, that is experience. nice that you have it. I feel like the complete opposite. <clears throat> it is nice having like it's it's a flex saying like I didn't like yeah, really true. go to. Co- I mean, I went to college, but I didn't finish or. And it's I so feel, weird. I feel it like is, in the it de- is almost like a flex now. Kind if of you're doing yeah. well, yeah. If, if you're, you're doing, doing well. well. And if I feel not, like then legit it's just like wow directly yeah. in the middle of that. Like I went to two year school. I was like in and out. I was like graduated before before Ben graduated high school. Obviously Probably. I'm older than him, yeah. but yeah, two years in and out, I went for graphic design, which worked out perfectly. But yeah, it's like had I not graduated and we were doing exactly this, I don't think I'd be too upset about it dude when people are like oh should i go to college or not or what should i do You're like Maybe what do you want to ma- do yes yeah mm-hmm. I, yeah for sure but um i i always reference the, how good two-year degrees are because of how well you've done with it but like you don't you go in, you get your two-year degree, and you know exactly what you're going into after it. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's how two-year degrees trade, work, yeah. right? Yeah. There was no, yeah, there was no generals. I mean, there was like public speaking, which honestly yeah, they helped don't me. Dick you around and psychology that which helped me too. But that was it. 
It was just like I went in there to learn what I needed to do, and then they send you off, and they have speakers that literally graduated from the same place that come in, and they're like, yep, I freelance, or yep, I work here. And then you're like, all right, I can do that. They even kind of set you up with a job. I, yeah. I personally think yeah. that the trades are are uh, only going up. And yeah. I think that like the typical just like four-year college degree, unless you're going to be like a, a doctor – a lawyer or a dentist, you know, something where you need to go. If you're going for like business or like, uh, whatever arts, like stuff like that. I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily going to separate you from the pack because everyone has that. Mm -hmm. And, and like, in, unless you have some experience or something to prove, like you are probably not going to sh outshine the other guy trying to get the job. That's true. <laughs> With like a lot of things, you're going to be a step ahead if you just have some random experience. experience. Yeah in anything right. whether that experience is like yeah i got hired on a gig doing something that i've I never went to school for yeah. but i learned how to do it on youtube and then right yeah. so you were in college we talked about this on the first podcast i was out because i was i dropped out ben wasn't in it michael wasn't you know so like you were a popular guy in college like a lot of people knew you 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 had a lot of friends you're, you're good at making friends um so we start up this c-boys like tv thing on YouTube back then it wasn't very like no one really knew about YouTube people still don't know about YouTube but they just like didn't understand how was their reactions towards it well that's like it's tough because I had friends that were really like supportive right. of it through mm -hmm. but then there was a lot of people that were kind of like oh what is that oh cool they were making fun of you. Though. Yeah, it was kind of like a... They were like backhanded compliments. They'd be like, oh, you're going to go film a video this weekend? And I'm like... Right, like that kind of like yeah. kind of... Yeah, and I don't think it really became an issue almost until we got into like a bit larger of a point. And it was like, I don't know, say 100K. And it was like we were doing it and people then would hear. And they'd be like, oh, Ryan's one of those sea boys. And they'd yeah. like come up to you in a bar and they'd be like, so how's sea boys? And yeah. I'd be like... Try to like make fun of you. Good, and I'd be like, how's class like i would just always like try to brush it off right you're such you a nice tell. guy no you could always just tell that it was like kind of a backhanded compliment they weren't genuinely they weren't genuinely interested how you were doing it, how it they were trying to chirp you they're trying yeah, to put it, you down it was like a chirp yeah, yeah and i think that down. was pretty tough for a while like during know it was rc boys like years the beginning when the, we didn't really have like a dude, ton. the startup phase is always so hard exactly but, and you had that wearing on you mm -hmm. yeah because i had a lot of outside people i remember this like conversations we had and I was like, no, you guys don't understand. Like, this is what people on the outside are saying. Yeah. And you were kind of, it was, I'm sure it was kind of embarrassing. It, it I mean, partially. In a way. Because it just sucks point, getting razzed. It was I, not mm -hmm. a, our full-time job. Know. It was yeah. none of ours. You, I mean, what did you think, like, was going to come of it? Did you even, like, I mean, what, what, did you, what did you think of it at the time? Did you think it was ever going to be something? Or did you think it was just kind of something we were going to do as a fad? It was just something to pass the time? What did you think? Uh... I mean, I always believed in us and, like, what we could do. But I would definitely say my mentality was, like, yeah, it's worked so far, and we're going to keep we're gonna right. keep doing it until it doesn't work. And that was kind of the narrative that I, like, stuck with. But for a while, dude, I, I same, same. I agree with that. I was just, like, you'd see the numbers, and you're, like, well, at 100K, why would we turn back mm -hmm. now? You know, yeah. I was just, like, I think it's going to work, so I'm going to keep pushing for it. People I, still say that, though, to yeah. this day. Yeah, yeah They're exactly. like, what are you going to do after? after? If or it's what? Like, well, bro, I didn't what are think, you going to do? I didn't think we'd be at a million. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, obviously, yeah, I want to be. Right, right. But, like, you know, I didn't know where we'd be at a million. I don't know where we're going to be at five. I don't know where we're going to be at ten. There's or, And know. there's a beauty to not thinking that deeply about it. Obviously, make some goals and plan for things. But there's a beauty to being like, I don't know, but I'm enjoying it, and we're growing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, just one particular moment. And you might have just, it was, I'm sure you had a lot going on. You kind of had a snap, mm. but, uh, I brought the camera with for something. I was filming something that we were doing and, uh, it was in the very, very early days. And you were like, why are you filming this? Like, stop filming this. Like, I'm like, people are making fun of me at school and shit. Like, I remember that. And I was like, oh damn, like I felt kind of bad. And I like, Put it down, but I was like, no, fuck those guys, dude. This mm -hmm. is going to be, you're going to be huge. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I said you're going to be huge, but I was like, fuck those guys. Who cares what they think? Mm -hmm. You always had faith in it, like full 100% faith. You had a vision from it from the beginning. And that's what, like, I never had But I didn't have those people in my ears chirping and so True. hard. Where we're located, we don't hang around 
any other people like us mm -hmm. that are, and, I'm, and they're like us, but they're not like us. Like they're not doing our thing. They're not in our world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like when you're surrounded by so many normal people, you start kind of almost like comparing yourself to them. And you're like, man, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you start second guessing it. And I think it's just so important that you don't uh, compare yourself to others like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you want to be normal, then obviously then, yeah. look up to people that are normal. That's an interesting then thing is that doing. being normal, it's to some people, that is a compliment. When I, when I was a kid, so I played hockey growing up all my years, I would like, I wasn't like the, I was sometimes a good player and other times I was the worst player and other times I was probably in the middle, I would say more so. But I remember I would be coming home from a game or whatever and I'd be like, I uh I did better than than so and so. And my dad be like, "So, why why are you comparing yourself to him? You should be comparing yourself to yourself this, to this yeah. guy, to this guy cuz he's the best." And and I think that's something that you know, it almost makes it hard for us cuz like we look at everyone around us, they live like just the very textbook lifestyle. We don't live that life. We didn't really sign up for that life. We should compare ourselves to the people that we want to be like, mm -hmm. you know, so like Logan Paul. Um, and I'm not saying you need to be exactly like him, but like your idols, mm -hmm. you look up to the people that are doing better than you, not people that are just. But it is interesting to compare yourself like for hockey, for example, the best player on the team, you knew him, you met him, you play with him. You get to compare yourself if you want to to him, but I was like, we to compare, his game, you know, to his yeah, game. to his game. Uh, we compare ourselves, let's say, to like Nauk or Logan Paul or anyone big on YouTube or anyone that we aspire to be like. That's how but, you grow. But yeah, absolutely. But we don't get to meet them necessarily and ch and hash it out or right. even pick get their to like brains. pick right. their brains or even what view they're what they're doing in person. If you wanna, if you wanna keep going up you got to compare yourself to people above you mm -hmm. if you're going to compare at all Simple. you really shouldn't compare but if you if you want to i mean maybe self-reflect and try to make yourself better then sometimes it is good but never compare to somebody who's doing equally as good as you or worse than you because then it's like you're never going to move up yes yeah, and you're just like oh i'm doing good and i'm 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 just fine i don't yeah. need to i don't need to work harder yeah, i don't, I don't need to do better exactly and that's kind of the moral of that mm -hmm. uh, that point I wanted to get into. So we asked Ken this. Did you ever see yourself being a YouTuber? Uh, not until I no. we were YouTubers. And <laughs> I found out. Uh, <laughs> not in a literal million years. The only backtrack I have on that is there was a time in my life when I said the only thing I'm good at is having fun. And yeah, that's our job. You are really and good, dude. I always wanted to be a professional snowmobiler. I wanted to do this. I want to do that. Like I could see myself in an unusual lifestyle, but never would have thought that YouTube would have been the path that would have taken me there or the road that I'm on. Isn't it crazy how you used to say you want to be a professional snowmobiler and you basically live that same lifestyle. And I don't have to be good. <laughs> you don't have to be good, but like 10 times better. Like, you know, you're, you're so much, there's so much more to you than being a professional. You hang out with them, dude. You know them mm -hmm. all. Dude, that's the craziest right? part. Right? Nothing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I, like, I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like, you're. There's so much more to Ryan Iwerks than he's a professional snowmobiler. Mm -hmm. Granted, I don't know if that's like a compliment or. or oh, definitely. Not. I would say. I would say it is. Yeah, dude, you always want to be like, you know, it's like being a basketball player. There's more, you would want to, it to be more to you than just being good at basketball, right. Right. just being good at All hockey, just being good at basketball players you talk about is because they live this lifestyle or, or they act this way off the court, you know, mm -hmm. they have a personality behind them. So when did you, when did you see it becoming a reality? Because you worked, what was the last job that you had before you went like full time? Um, I worked at Corwin at so the detailing like center with like a, that was an eye-opening experience of people that were like truly content with just like a beat, just doing their day. And we were kind of like coming up and it was new year's like Christmas break of my senior year. Cause I'd quit. I did uh, construction the summer before started that job back up. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to be done doing this. And then that 
whole semester, I went full time here. And anytime I would have spent working at Corwin, I came, I drove out to the lake like three or four days a week, like crammed my schedule together so we could come, we could print shirts at the time. Yeah. But that was the moment when I knew I was like, all right, I'm going all in on this. Like, I'm not even going to yeah. think about doing construction after I'm done, which was my initial plan. I was like, all right, now this is what I'm going to do. So going into it, did you have like kind of a game plan of like, this is what I want to like do once I'm in the business or is it like, I'm going to just dive in and figure it out? A bit of a dive in and figure it out. Um, at the time, like our business has changed a lot. We were doing a ton of like screen printing, stuff like that. Like I would say that was one of my main roles yeah. at that point was like helping in whatever way that I could just to get like those shirts out the door and managing all of that. And then now it's grown so big and we've kind of changed it that Ken's taken it over. Yeah. But like at that time I was like, all right, this is what I'm going to come in and start to do. And then we'll see where it goes from there. You know, what's crazy is, is even back then it was like taking such a chance on like, this is what it could turn into, or this is what, this is what my role could be because like we really weren't getting paid Mm -mm. and it Mm -hmm. was like constantly changing, you know, um, know we what, what we were doing it was basically just like a huck and pray yeah. every single day there, which which besides what, the schedule we created now it's still that way mm-hmm. there was times in that year where like credit card payments would come up because i kind of lived the same way like i had a little bit of a check coming in at least and it was like tight like there was more there was times when i would like pay the minimum balance on my credit card because we wouldn't we wouldn't get paid and it was like mm-hmm. yeah boys we there's literally no money. We have no money. We paid all of our bills, but there's nothing for everybody else. Like we got to keep grinding. And those were like the, some of the most like nose to the grindstone. Maybe we weren't even doing it the right way. Like you well, talked we about on the first fucking there to work. We were grinding your backs up against the wall. It like you had no option, but to try to make money and like make it work in any way that you could. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. crazy how long that was our mentality. Yeah. It still, it still is. Obviously it's changed a little bit, but it's crazy how long it was just like, fuck it. Just put in the work and figure the rest out later. I feel like it's like a slingshot. Like you you pull this back, right? And like you're building all this momentum. And now we finally let go. And then we built up. And we're at like the point right now where it's like even. Where we like finally have like caught up. We're like safe-ish. But, like, we have so much more to go, and we're, like, shooting at the moon. Like, now we're pointing. Yeah. We built up all our momentum. We already got momentum. We yeah. got our momentum, but now we're, like, trying to point where we want to go and, like, keep the ball in the air, I guess. Circling back around just the other part, I'll, that's what I'll be forever grateful for being able to, if your back's up against the wall, to just work harder. Like, I'm super grateful for that. And by that, I mean work harder and then, like, you know, make more content, make more whatever, and, and then get that money back. But if you if you are working, like, a normal job, if you're working for someone or if you're working for someone who's working for someone, you can't do that. You got to go out and get another job. And so, or whatever, you know, you got to go out and, and, and mow someone's lawn or whatever. So, like, that's one part I've been super grateful. When our back's against the wall, we can uh, brainstorm and make money, I guess. It's been yeah. a really good thing versus having to find other ways. Just and like just spend more time. Yeah. Well, I mean, we spend the time, but it's like, or yeah, but yeah, I guess go grab another job and you're just like pedaling. And, right. and I definitely don't want to talk down on anyone who's ever in that situation, oh. but it's a beautiful thing being able to have your back against the wall and then push forward in a positive Absolutely. way. We went full business. Is that, business yeah, that was on this good. Podcast. That's why we're number one. Yep. Number one um, let's, let's get a little off, off business. Let's get into some some good story time. Ryan, your driving record is impeccable today, <laughs> but when you were a kid, holy, you were like a nightmare. You were a nightmare. You had you had every ticket. You had lost your license. Almost, I think you were almost. you were facing jail time. You got a good lawyer. You got a good lawyer. Facing you guys. jail time. You were facing jail time in a freaking Scion TC, dude. I always wanted a fast car. Like you had a WRX and stuff. I was like, man, if I had that, that'd be great. I would, would be in be jail. Dead. I'd still be in jail. We're dead. <laughs> Let's get into how many tickets you had and then your worst one. Well, you had two really bad ones. Well, my first ever ticket. I was showing my buddy Luke how fast my car could go on a dark country road. We we're doing like 95 or something like that because it hardly could go over 100 miles an hour. Um, but we did it so but much. But we did it so much. Uh, <laughs> and the cop pulled me over and let me off because I was like 16. I'd had my license for like three weeks. And he gave me a 65 and a 55. 
And I, I did not take that like he off the hook. Have. No, I, I just kept going. Just <laughs> yeah. kept driving. You're like, fast. Wow, nice guy, nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Man, all cops are nice. Uh, I don't know. I probably got like three or four. I remember like pretty frequently, I was one ticket away from losing my license. Like that was the line that I rode. I was like, all right, if I get one more ticket, I lose my license, so I can't speed. And then that one would go off and be like, okay, I'll get another. And one day, well, we started doing this thing, or I started doing this thing. <laughs> Uh, and it was how fast I, I could make it. In that too. You, yeah, yeah, we, oh, we yeah. kind of all did. And once you set this record, I was like, I can't Holy even touch that. I'm not going to try. I, I anyway, still to this day go can't, on, I can't. This. tell what, what it was. So the, the competition was how fast you could get from the lake to Fargo. And it's normally a 50-minute drive now, at least 55 somewhere. And I think I had it down to like... It was in the 20s, like high 26. 20s. Yeah. 26. 26. I don't know Six how that's minutes. possible. For the re- yeah, the average so, person does it in 46. Yeah. Basically, you just double the speed limit the entire way. Like, I remember down a road curves like 95, 100. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I have the balls to do it now it would, in my car. Unbelievable. I don't, we were so dumb. We didn't know, like, if you hit a deer at 100, it's going to hurt. That too. That's possibly kill you. It's yeah. going to for sure total your car. But we never, for some reason, even hit any. No, dude, what? I never, I never stopped Why? at the stop signs. Yeah, there. I you'd drive blow them like sixty-five. I remember 70. that. How would you not see cops? I see cops mm. all the time. I, dude, I think same. times have changed. Every times take, have yeah. changed. But I remember I would do the same thing, and it was just like you would just. It would be a con- like, like playing chicken with yourself. Mm-hmm. How long can you hold the f- pedal to the floor? 100. And I think my best was maybe like in the thirties. Yeah, I don't know how the frick Ryan. Did you told me and you I remember, texted you that's average insane. 105 yeah. Yeah. on you the main you streets. Didn't, you didn't Allegedly. basically lift the whole Allegedly. time. Allegedly. Allegedly. This was years ago. I mean, six six years what's ago. What's, statu- what's the statue of limitation? I don't know. Dude, who Three gives years? a fuck? They're not going to give it. Uh, anyways, so that shit was crazy. You and the Scion TC was nuts. That was by far my most reckless driving age. 180 horses of just, <laughs> just going <laughs> to the <laughs> to the brim. floor, man. Did we took, everywhere? We took that thing through the field, in, yeah. all in Jake's all all of all the of fields, them. gravel roads. We'd load up in it, rip the e brake. Yeah. We'd dry rip it on pavement. dry pavement. Once we figured out we could drift on dry pavement, you figured back it out. <laughs> My back tires were literally shredded. They had flat spots in them. My favorite part is that you then would just roll that into the winter. Like, if anyone's wondering how to not, like, you know, go into the ditch in the winter or whatever, slide around, just get... Just get new tires. Ryan didn't, but mm. somehow just rocked it. We got drift. chased by we this, like, so we got chased driving. by a gold Jeep. I'm not going to go into this story because it's, it's kind of funny, but we got chased. Some dude just, like, pissed off that we were ripping on the lake. And then, yeah, we were all on the, and then Ryan, he's like, yeah, dude, he chased me up to 100 on this, like, back road, and I went 100 with the tires mm. I have, which were, like, racing slicks. I'm like, dude, how do you not Snowy die? Road. How do Snowy you not road. die? It just makes you look back, though, like. How many young kids are out there with your license? Like, dude, yeah. I, I, when I'm in my Evo or even my new car now, but especially the Evo because I feel like people think they maybe have a chance then, I'll have so many kids come up and want to race and just, like, they. it's maybe a kind of fast car, but I'm like, dude, like, no, I'm not going to risk racing you on this road and possibly both of us lose our license mm-hmm. or, or some someone get hurt. Um but like back then, you didn't think about that. There was no consequences. You're just the happy best to be part there. About being a kid, dude. There was no consequences at but that. But there point. is. But there, there is, is consequences. There's real <laughs> so, consequences. There is. Don't live your life. Yes. Like that. No. It's not. You got to be careful for sure. To to the young drivers out there. Yeah, you should say. I felt like there was no consequences. That's it's so the feeling. Was. I was like, if you want to go rip, it's you're gonna feel like you might be invincible. But I was like, no, you're just as not happen. invincible as anyone yeah. else. We're very lucky. So tell the story. Yeah, about tell the your story. About ticket that damn near put you in jail. At how old were you? I think 18? I was. I 18. I don't. Yeah, I probably was eighteen. Um, I went into Fargo and it was like three a.m. on a Wednesday. I had to work my landscaping job at literally five thirty in the morning. Is when we were leaving, and I'm like, great. If I get home, if I can get another like thirty minute drive home. I can sleep for like two hours and I just hauled ass out of four. I think I texted, I was like leaving Fargo now and I was going to text when I got to my door. So it was like well past midnight at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It was like 3am. I come flying over this hill and I just had a hunch, just a hunch that I was like, mm, I don't, I think there might be like a cop up here or something. I don't know. Slowed down to like a hundred. <laughs> like that was, that's what it was. It was a hundred on the dash. And, uh, I come over the hill, radar detectors. And I was like, 
lock up the brakes. Sure enough, cop pulls out behind me, comes up, gun like out of his holster, coming up across the street. And I'm like sitting there looking like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. That's I'm right. Like, I'm like hands on the, the steering wheel. Part Look at him. That. He comes up and he like puts his flashlight right in my face. And my cat, my family cat was sleeping on the passenger seat. And the guy bursts out laughing. And I go, oh, I'm totally off. Probably scared I, of shit. Yeah, I'm like, eh. He's and, like, uh, man, this guy's white. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell does a hundred with a cat? Like it's it was just a baby casual. kitten. Too. Yeah, it was a young <laughs> kitten. But anyway, uh, yeah. So he goes, "Are you drunk?" And I'm like, "No, I'm dumb, but I'm not that stupid." <laughs> I, did, I didn't drink at the time. I was like, "I would never." And so uh, he goes, "Like, okay, well, give me your license. Do you know how fast you were going?" And I was like, "Uh, pretty fast." And he was like, hundred and one." And I was like, "Fuck." Jeez. Because I knew as soon as you break a hundred, a hundred is you lose your license. And if you have a passenger, it's attempted manslaughter. Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck. So he goes back. I'm like, maybe he'll let me off. Like, you know, he'll let me down to a hundred. Literally a hundred. Ninety nine, whatever. Yeah. Ninety nine. Yeah. And so he comes back. He goes, okay, here's your ticket for a hundred and one. Should just be a ticket. Like whatever. I go to work or I go home just sick. I'm literally sick to my stomach. I wake up at five in the morning. My dad's up too. And I'm just sitting eating my cereal, like shaking. Goes like, what's wrong? What's wrong, dudes? And I'm like, uh, I, I got a ticket last night. And he goes, oh, no. How much? I was like, 101. Oh, and dude, I think he just like calmly dude. stood up and walked in. <laughs> <laughs> it was so what bad. He, like, do, he man? literally couldn't what do even do? look at me. I was like, fuck. Because he, he was already paying how much for insurance that, on you a month? Oh, oh my gosh. Because you were, what, awful. 17 and your insurance was like 500 bucks that car a month? Wasn't no, cheap. it went. For mm -hmm. how slow it was, it was not cheap. If insurance. you maybe mm -hmm. have a number on that of what it went to after that ticket. pretty. I'm pretty sure it was borderline illegal how much they charged us for insurance <laughs> after that. Bro, you were, you were probably like more than most people pay for DUIs. Probably. <laughs> Seriously. Honestly, at that rate. And so anyway, I had to, uh, I went to high school with this girl and, uh, I was like, hey, your mom's a lawyer, right? And she's like, yeah, for like businesses. And I was like, can she represent me in court? Because I'm going to lose my license. And she's like, ah, uh, yeah, I think so. And so anyway, I got represented and uh, didn't end up losing my license. We fought real hard. Or got, going to jail. Or going to jail. Oh, and uh, Were they threatening jail time? I think it's like, you know, it's, it's, like jail time that, and yeah. a fine. Okay. And so, yeah, I got it down to 99. So it was a $385 ticket. Not bad. And I paid a couple thousand for the lawyer fees. And then I had to go to a crime prevention class, which oh. was one of the highlights of my life, honestly. I never knew how were, much the lawyer was you either. Were, you were with actual kids who were probably going to commit crimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was like <laughs> there was young people <laughs> that had like they were in gangs and they were like trying to scare them out. It was like a scared straight thing, but like just in a classroom. But yeah. and it was all these kids. They were like, yeah. Uh, I got caught with a gun. Uh, <laughs> They're just screaming at Ryan and everyone else, obviously. Like, that's what I picture scared straight. Like, no, it was literally, it wasn't like the Holiday Inn in Moorhead. We were like sitting in a little boardroom and we got cookies and stuff like that. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was dumb. But <laughs> they were on drugs. Yeah, but there was, yeah, people at that the had meeting. Like gotten, it was mainly a lot of Deweys. A really? lot of Deweys. And then a couple kids that were like, yeah, I got caught with a gun. I'm 16. Jeez. Uh, and then, and then there's you. And then there was me. I was like, oh, I was Attem doing 101. Attempted on cat slaughter. With my cat, cat slaughter. slaughter. That's, what we, that's what we call that story. <laughs> Damn, that's a crazy yeah. story, dude. You did get pulled over a lot. Yeah. And then after that, I kind of cleaned my life up. And then. You, you learned your lesson. Yeah, definitely yeah, learned my lesson. Yeah, not just driving. Like, you literally cleaned, he cleaned his room. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Uh, and then I started to get window tint tickets. And then. That's uh, it. Yeah, that's then. just bogus. Mm -hmm. As it gets there. You know, those pr probably will never go away. Mm -hmm. Nope. I have a slight story I can add to my early driving days. I rear-ended my second grade teacher. <laughs> I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, right before Dude, Christmas. So, hurts. like, I'm in Fargo, like, driving in town. Fucking, the traffic was busy. I wasn't used to having, like, a lot of traffic. So, the stop was, everyone backed up, and I was looking for a restaurant. I didn't know where I was going. Rear-ended my, uh, this van fucking hard, dude. <laughs> and I had this, this, like, older red Jeep. And she hops out. She's furious. She's like, what the hell? And then she sees me. She's like, oh, CJ. And <laughs> and like, I, I was, you? I felt, Wait. yes, I felt. And nice. CJ was still in second grade at this no, point. I, I, was <laughs> like, I was in like 10th grade or 9th grade. But yeah, 
totaled out the Jeep. Damn. It's oh. still it's still ran. I okay, mean, it was yeah, totaled yeah. cuz it like it cost more to fix it, but it's still like it was just bent up and I mobbed that till like probably senior year. Yeah, I rear ended my senior year. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, really I like, all I can speaking say. of tickets, it's funny. like I was gonna ask like, do you guys. I don't know why I count. I counted this because I got pulled over so much, and this is not like a, a one upping Ryan story. I just I don't have that many tickets, but I get pulled over so much, you guys. Not anymore because I don't drive that much because I lived at the shop, so whatever. But I have gotten pulled over fifty two times since I was sixteen. How? That's what? 10 years, 52 times in 10 years. How? Wait, how do you not get tickets? I think I, I, my do, question. I do, I no, do, but, but how do you not get pulled over and it's just an automatic, ins- like, oh, he's been pulled over 52 times. There's that's an the automatic crazy ticket. Part. Yeah. It's like, so for the, the speeding ones, I'll get the tickets there for the window tints. I'll get them there. But other than that, you can make up. For what? Like, what do you get pulled over? Yeah, I remember. So like in my Buick, one time I got pulled, this was more of a bogus one, but I got pulled over because my license plate was so dirty that the cop didn't think I had one. And then I get pulled over later on and he's just like, yo, you were swerving all over the road. And I was just like, ah, I just got new tires and like, I got to get it aligned. And like, and so I was texting off. and I'm, I'm also drunk. Yeah. But so you don't say those things, oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, okay. you, just, you were 16 it's, it's at the pretty, time here. Just, it's pretty easy to, joking, get, to get out of. But yeah, dude, it's crazy. Fifty-two times, like, that's insane. <laughs> I just, it's just hot. You know? How do you keep track of that? I don't even know because why do you keep track. Because of that? once it hit like twenty-five or thirty, I was just like, dude, I get pulled over so much, but I don't get tickets. Like, it's crazy. I'm just gonna keep track of it. So I started tallying my phone, and I have probably like ten tickets to show for it. So like, it's like getting pulled over five times, getting one ticket. And a careless, kind of. and a careless drive. It. Oh Driving. yeah, 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 yeah. Has that hit your insurance, by the way? Honestly, yeah. no, no. It hasn't. My insurance hasn't gone up, which I was definitely w- most worried about. But like from the careless driving ticket you correct. got from from on the, the ice, video when yeah. you had the Subaru. On I think the, the worst part is like when dumbest the ticket. D- didn't the even know I was DNR pulling up. Give I know, and, and they were pulling up, and I, I, we were just about to stop. And if we would have stopped, we would have been nothing. We would have just been chilling, right, on the ice. And then I remember uh, Tint was like, <laughs> "Dude, cut it, cut it." And I'm like, "What are you saying? You weren't even is something sliding, wrong?" Were yeah, you? I was like, "Is something wrong with my?" motor and i'm like no everything's good and then he pulls up and they're like we told you to stop bro that was just bogus yeah, everyone bogus. who watched that video Dude, knows that's even bogus. i'm not i mean i've had plenty of other like cops or um sheriffs come up to us uh like multiple of of each variety come up and say man so did you fight that ticket and then we go, no, I just, we just kind of don't want to bark up the tree. But yeah. they were like, that was bogus. I cannot believe that. That ticket was pretty bogus. Yeah. A, a lake in the middle of nowhere. I yeah. mean, I respect if you got to like, if they see it, obviously you can't let it slide. But he Literally. actively searched us out from following us on Snapchat <laughs> or Instagram or whatever, which we were dumb and we're posting that shit at the time. But who, who would have thought? We didn't think we were doing anything wrong. We, we didn't go out there like. We're being bad boys. If anything, we're we were patting it. ourselves on the back for, for like for being hey, so planned out. Yeah, this yeah. is this, this is, really is good like of actually us. not like, doing it in a Walmart no parking way. lot. Yeah. yeah, but anyways, he comes and tracks us down and, and hands it to us. Yeah, I guess that's how it goes sometimes. But <laughs> you gotta sometimes you just gotta bend over. <laughs> Fuck, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about the limo? Yeah, so we're sending the limo down the road. Unfortunate, <laughs> unfortunate times. Well, not everyone really. listening to this is going. What do you mean by sending it? Are you going to jump it? <laughs> Are you going to no, jump we're, it? We're selling it because it honestly, it's just gross. We've had a lot of good times in it, and it, it doesn't work that well. We've kind of graduated. It's time to get something else or just not mostly have it. the lack of AC makes mm-hmm. it gross. Yeah, so you hot, get in so true. Gross, with like fifteen bro. people and you. Breathing and packed. there's no AC and then we're just like, Ugh. Dude, yeah, you feel sweaty, sweaty and and then it smells. Smells bad. It's always got this. It's got this lingering scent to it. And it's I, never I, could get I, I can it. never it's not light figure either. out what it is, though. I, it's not light. Mice. It's Dude, heavy. It's mice. <laughs> Ken just goes mice. Let's maybe mice. not say that. So the anyway, we're, we're selling it. We got our eyes on a slight upgrade, which which slight. We, it's it's slight, but it's gonna be sick. I I want to get a party sick. bus. I think we shouldn't even fuck with this. this I think new we should limo. because we're acting like the thing costs a million dollars. Like yeah. I think we yeah. should fuck with it because which which one. The limo that oh, you want the, the limo over, I, I just want over it because we're we're all like, Ooh, what are we gonna do? Tint marker, like we'll throw down and then Sea Boys throw down and if we want, like we can throw down too. Like it's it's six grand. I'm down. Yeah. I mean, so I mean the people the people listening right now that, that don't know, we have this limo. 
It's a big limo. We can pile long boy. In. Yeah, it's a long, long boy. boy. We Extended. can pi- we can pile in like eighteen, sometimes twenty five. Like we've had so many people in there at one point where the center of the limo is <laughs> dragging, going down the road. But we bought it originally, kind of as a joke, just for video. But I don't purposes. think it's a joke anymore. It's not a joke anymore. We found out truly how convenient having a limo is because, like, rolling around, we got five guys. You immediately add, you know, our girlfriends, our friends. You roll on at like 10 people. It's like, well, shit, do you want to take two cars? It's a good time. Too. Or should we all just pile in the limo? Everyone, you know, play music, have a good time. We can go out to eat, go to bars. Um, you can it, legally it's, drink it's the best. in the back like, of ha- it too. Having, having a limo was truly, we found out a cheat code. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And now I think people in the area are seeing us like rolling around in this limo and piling the entire squad out. And then we, when we're leaving bars, we're bringing all of our friends with, too. So that's how it gets so piled in there. But people f- are finding out, like, oh, shit, that's a hack. Like, it's it's truly a cheat code yeah. having a limo. That's why I'm saying, why aren't we just going full send? Why get you know, a party bus. Well, I, just I get a party bus because it's going to be great. We can stand up in it. The issue with the party bus, though, is is it, like, kind? I think it complicates trying to find a driver. Like, I don't think we could just have your little brother drive a party bus. I mean, the small ones aren't that big. I'm actually exactly. not Which that worried really about that. The, 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 CDL. I'm more worried about. Oh, <laughs> so, you really? okay. <laughs> so you do need a CDL? I don't fucking know. So you do need? I don't know either. Do you know? Do you I, need a party? Do a CDL for a party bus? No, it's private use. Oh, you don't. Well, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not fun. that worried about that. I think for I'm more worried about yeah. the legitimate purchase. So we're talking about that. We were looking at this party bus that's fifteen thousand, and this this limo that's six thousand. So. We're already like just sitting around, just like, mm, should we do it? Should we do it? And then you like add a 10 grand bill to the party bus, which again, I'm down for. But it's like, are, how long are we going to dick around trying to find a good party bus that's way more money? And then we're like, all right, are we, are we ready to justify it? That's what I'm getting at. Like this limo, we could go cop today because like it's just that cheap. Yeah. yeah the other thing is like, do we want to get another like half sender kind of piece of shit? But I think with this one, luckily with the excursion, why I do like it is it well made content. I don't know if the party bus would necessarily. It's not funny. It's true. And like our limo was so shitty, it was funny. This excursion though, it does have content behind yes. it that that could possibly be made and people so I guess enjoy because if you lift it up, put big wheels on it, that's actually pretty badass. Can we do that? That's yeah, a, yeah I, that's I'd the plan. So, so yeah. I mean, no one again to fill you guys in again. It's an excursion. It's a super long boy Extended excursion. And excursion. I would assume that you can just put an excursion lift on it, and then we'll get <sighs> custom offsets to get us some wheels, and it'll actually be sick. I don't care if we drive it for Jacked a year. I, that's just what I want to do. Drive I for three months for all I I'm care. not disagreeing on the party bus because I yeah. think that's where we'll end up. I'm day. down. I'm Does down. it smell? No, it's that's the best it smells. part. It's here. Eh. Oh, what? Outside? Well, Mark, you... <laughs> <laughs> All right, decision made. We're buying an experience. All right, right wait, wait, wait. Mark just pulled up in that limo <laughs> that we are potentially buying, but now it some tells like me we're we going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like we just bought it. Holy oh, hey. shit, dude. Now you just watch real time how shit works around here. Again, the <laughs> last podcast we ended with a pirate ship, and now Mark's like, by the way, I brought it. It's here. Hey, Mike, do you have any plans this weekend? You've been on a roll lately, bro. <gasps> yeah, I, I do. Mean. I'm going to a film festival tonight. You, how many girls are you bringing home? At least two, possibly four. Really? I Can you imagine? Bro, Mike, your life is like, I'm just watching you blossom into this playboy. It's quite honestly entertaining to watch. Thank you. <laughs> I love to see it, you know. We'll just move from there. Yeah, you, can, we talk about, can we talk about last weekend's? I don't think so. Can I a little bit? I think that's more inappropriate than any of them. Can I just mention just don't maybe her name. relation to you before? It's Mike's Wait. cousin. No, I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going. No, but it is Jake's ex. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but not not the one that he, like, dated publicly. Oh, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not that gal. To be fair, Jake has had a lot you, of exes. You wouldn't that's even true. know who this one is. You've so that. uh, that's true. But Jake was cool with it. Yeah. He, he loved it. He was Me and Jake like, yeah, are homies, dude. Fuck. Like, actually, like, Jake doesn't give a fuck what I do, and I don't give a fuck what Jake does. I know. I love it. I love it. People are like, isn't that weird? It's Jake's ex. I'm like, dude, no. Jake Con- was probably like, my God, do it, do it, do it, do it. Considering we rode home together. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They got dropped off in the same car. Oh, that's how even I, better. With how many girls are you tunnel buddies with Jake? <laughs> Just stop me when? Stop. <laughs> oh, <four? laughs> After I got past the first, I was like, wait, we're keep going? That's impressive. What? No, I want to actually say three, but... But you mean four. But I mean four. 
Well, sure. Jake, Jake's mom. Now we really got to wrap this up, you guys. <laughs> Jake's mom. <laughs> Bro. All right, on that note, we'll see you guys next time. We're giving away another sign. So just subscribe, like, follow us on Instagram, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be giving that away. Uh, hope you guys enjoy these. We're going to keep rolling.